Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to my home shop. My name is Jamie. Today we're going to make hobby grade flat stones with tools that you might already have in your shop or in your garage. In one of my last videos, I made these. These were made with a Harbor Freight sharpening stone, and they came out really well. That video was particularly popular, which for me was really fun to see. Um, but one of the feedback, uh, one piece of feedback that I received was, hey, well, not everybody has a surface grinder in their shop, and I totally get that. But a lot of people do have a bridge port. If you're watching this video or learning about machining, this is probably the second thing you're going to buy after you've bought, bought a lathe. And one of my viewers suggested, you know what, I've done this before, but I used a cup grinder, a diamond cup grinder. And I thought, you know what, that's a great idea. So what better way to find out if it works than to do it? Um, you know, again, this stone that I had picked up from Harbor Freight has worked really well um, on the Vice Restoration Project and on some other projects in my shop. So we have the Norton stone. I have a diamond cup wheel here mounted to an arbor. It's important we make sure the rotation of that's going the right direction. I'm going to be, it'll be spinning clockwise. And as the rotor drives clockwise, we'll keep it nice and tight up there. If I were to spin it the other way, we've got potential that it would that it would loosen up on us. And we don't want that. So it's important that you have the direction on this going the right way. Another thing that I've done, as you can see, it almost looks like an operating table, is I've gone through and I've covered up the ways, I've covered up parts of my vise with tape to keep any of the grit away from the day-to-day -day operations of the mill. I've trammed the table for both um, tilt and nod of the head, so everything should be pretty square. And this is the first one that I'm doing. There's been no editing to this point, other than my intro, which I've done a couple of takes on so far, to be honest. Um, but as far as the actual work goes, let's do this together and see if it works. Okay, so we've got a few things going on. From an audio perspective, we've got the rotary phase converter going on in the background. We're going to use that to fire up the three-phase bridge port. In a moment, we'll probably have the vacuum going, so that could be pretty loud. So this could turn into a, a situation where I, I, I do some audio recording after the fact. But to walk through my thought process here, I have my, my vise mounted and trammed, um, dialed in parallel to the table. I have the cup uh, just barely touched off on the top of the stone. So I brought the quill down, just barely touched it, and then locked the quill. My intention is to use the knee in order to control how much I raise that up and down. And I think that's about it. So we're going to we're going to take this we're going to take it slow. The speed on this should be moderately fast on the on the arbor and the diamond uh, the diamond stone. So let's start by firing that up and seeing how that reacts. So that was a good lesson to learn. So we need to put a nut in there to kind of lock that in. Because the bridge port shuts down relatively quickly, that stopping motion of the, the momentum of the wheel if you stop the spindle, it'll then unwind itself. That can be bad. So I've put a uh, lock nut, uh, a split washer, and a bolt, uh, sorry, a nut on the back side of this to make sure that as we slow down the bridge port, it, the wheel doesn't come um, unwinding off. 
So with that said, let's give it a let's give it a whirl here on that first pass. All right, so after one pass, we've got a nice clean cut here in the middle where it took over you know, the whole surface area, but I still have a low spot here and a little bit of a low spot here. That's not uncommon. That's why you have to grind these because they are not inherently flat for the type of uh, tolerance that we're looking for in a machine shop. So we're gonna go up about, probably about a thousandth of an inch, maybe half a thousandth and take another pass, see how it looks. So finishing up the first pass here, we're able to get all of the corners uh, flat with the rest of the, the stone. Let's clean this up and we'll flip it over and do the coarse side. All right, we have the stones off of the off of the mill. They're a little dusty, dirty, um, so we're going to clean them. I saw a really cool underrated video by Kinetic Precision, which is a company in New Hampshire that actually makes precision ground flat stones, um, and they recommend WD-40 and some cardboard. So we're going to give that a shot right now to just clean these guys up get some of the some of the gook off of there Sure does does look pretty good. It's wet, so it's going to be a little darker, but it's nice and clean.
All right, so now we have our two flat stones. These are eight inch. Uh, ultimately, I'll cut these in half to make four inch stones. Uh, I don't, I don't need anything this large. But let's start with the sound test. Wow, those sound really good. Yeah, that sounds great. And let's try the coarse side. You can just hear the way they settle in on one another. Wow, I'm very happy with that. Okay. But one of the tests of a machine, machine shop stone is that you can rub it on something flat and you won't damage the surface. So let's start with that test here. Get us zoomed in. So we can see that. So this surface is very consistent. It has some finish marks that go north and south, but there's no dings or scratches in it. And there's a teeny bit of pitting down here, but nothing. So I put these on. All right, so it's done something here to the surface. Looks like it has picked up some of those high spots from that kind of that north-south that I was talking about. Let's see if that yeah, I can see that. I'll bring it closer. More light help. Okay. Yeah, so with a circular motion, I can see it's picking up some of these high spots here from my surface grinder work. So this was, these were hit with a surface grinder and then with a Scotch-Brite wheel. So what I want to test next, I'll clean them up. All right, let's put a dimple in here so that we can see if it cleans it up. All right, so we've put an E right there in the middle. I don't see that. And now let's see how the stone reacts to that. Well, you can feel it. Can feel it biting it, and then it, and then it takes it away. I think the 
the proof here is going to be in the pudding. So let's take a nice close look at that. You can see how the part that was swelled out from driving the stamp in, which rose up, it's now nice and flat. So let's try the fine, let's try the fine side. And so with that, you can see I picked up a few little swirl marks in there. So that's either irregularity in the stone or an unclean surface. But that is nice and smooth. All right, let's try something else. All right, here I've taken the jaw off the vise. Let's just do this again with a with another piece. So the provenance for this piece of metal is that it was surface ground flat on the surface grinder, and then I used a Scotch Bright wheel to kind of buff it. So it does have um, a couple of things. So there's a from the Scotch Bright wheel, there's a bit of a pattern with some X and Y. And there's a little bit, let's see if you can see it. There's a little bit of scratching you can see here. And then there's some scratching up here. All right, so let's see. Let's start with the fine side. Well, that sound just never gets old. And so we're just going to take this. It's clearly picking up the high spots. But did not add, it did not add any scratches. So it just did what it's supposed to do, which is pick up those high spots. Let's try the coarse side and see. That sounds so good. And see what the coarse side does. Nothing new, just accentuating those high spots. All right, now let's go back and we'll try the we'll try the stamp test again. All right, so we've got we've got our E pumped in there. Yeah, you can feel it. All right, now let's bring the stone over there. And I'm going to bring the microphone close. We'll see. See if you can hear it. You hear it, and then it, then it goes away.
pretty amazing. All right, well, that's going to wrap up this video on how to make flat stones for your home shop. Again, the Norton stone was a uh, dramatic upgrade over the Harbor Freight stone, which was uh, adequate, but very, very soft. These had a little bit more rigidity to them, um, a little harder, and I think the result, the result that came out was, was great. Um, and then, you know, based on the performance we saw in this piece here, I think it was doing exactly what it's supposed to do, take down the high spots without damaging the flat part of the, uh, the surface. And then, as we saw with that, if there was a nick in the material, the stone would take it out. So that's, I think that's a nice follow-up from the, from the original video. This is... Um, Again, an I, in an I, this was an idea from one of my viewers who recommended, you know, this diamond, use a diamond cup. So I made that quick and easy little arbor. But it's important you put a lock nut on here on this other side so that it does not unwind when your bridge port slows down. You don't want that flying off. All right, with that, again, thank you for coming to my shop and watching the video. I do appreciate it, and consider subscribing. You'll see more videos like this in the future. And until then, have a great day, and good luck with your projects in your shop.